What's poppin' gamers? Some of you might be looking at this video title and be thinking, Steampunk Builds, didn't you already do a video on this like a million years ago? And you'd be right. In fact, it's by far my most popular 7 Quick Tips video that I've ever made, with sci-fi and cyberpunk in 2nd and 3rd place only having a measly 3400 and 2900 views in comparison. And while the Steampunk video was really good for its time, it's been a long while since I made Made that video and in my opinion it has not aged well. And honestly the sci-fi video is even worse. Since you guys really like steampunk, I figured I'd come up with 7 more tips for making amazing steampunk and other industrial builds. Copper is essential, but don't forget to mix it up with other textures. My first tip of the original video was talking about how great copper is. And sure, it's very important in a steampunk aesthetic, but I think you guys all know that. I mean, come on. Copper is steampunk. Like, wow. Very insightful, old Leon. Good job, my dude. So copper is great and all, but if you're a big fan of texture mixing like me, you're gonna need some alternatives. After all, you usually only build with one phase of copper, and you don't just want to use one texture. For unaged copper, I love mixing mixing in red sandstone and acacia. Something about these three textures together is just mwah, amazing. For aged copper, try prismarine bricks and warped wood for a similar kind of vibe. And of course, deep slate goes very well with both. Don't forget about the huge number of deep slate texture options and their subtle color differences. For example, to my eyes, polished deep slate is a tiny teeny bit lighter than deep slate tiles. Regular old stone is a decent alternative to deep slate if you're using the aged copper block palette. In my humble opinion, it looks a bit wonky if you're pairing only stone with the orange copper palette, but with the aged copper it's pretty nice. My Clockwork Fortress build is a great example of the unaged copper and the deep slate colors working very nicely together. And for the aged copper, deep slate, and stone palette, there's my Militia Barracks from my Medieval Trading City build. Try making gears and other mechanical objects as best you can in Minecraft. It's going to be really hard to nail down all of the little details and gizmos that make steampunk great. That's just the nature of the aesthetic, and when you're going around placing one by one meter cubes of copper, it's kind of hard to get fine detail, you know? But there are still some things you can make on a small scale, or scale up to be bigger, such as these gears. Here's a few different designs made out of different materials. Stick these on the side of an airship or in a factory, and you immediately got steampunk vibes. Same goes for these tubes. Acacia trapdoors are a godsend if you're trying to make pipes and tubes and whatnot. And if you make this big one by one kind here, you can even fill them with water or lava or something else entirely. Get good with campfires. I talked about campfire smoke in my first video as a way of adding some really nice motion into your builds, and that definitely still holds up, but there are quite a few really neat advanced techniques with campfires that you might not know about. You guys all probably know about putting hay underneath a campfire to make the smoke go higher, but did you know that you can use an unlit campfire as an alternative to a half slab? or that you can use an armor stand submerged in lava underneath an unlit campfire to give it a fiery effect without making smoke? That one is pretty cool. Or if you only want a little bit of smoke, you can put a thin object like an iron bar, a lightning rod, or an open trap door above your campfire and it will only catch a few of the smoke puffs, but not all of them. How about that campfires will still emit smoke through a full block? It looks really great under a furnace or some lava. Nothing says steampunk quite like an airship. You might remember my original steampunk airship from way back when. That was the star of the first 7 Quick Tips video and my first ever long form build tutorial. It was pretty okay for like, you know, mid 2021 standards. But I think we can do a bit better in our current day and age. I've come a long way as a builder since June of 2021 and I want to put my building skills to the test with a bigger, better, and most importantly, wackier airship. Let's kick into a time lapse and see what we come up with.
Redstone farms and other common Minecraft builds can be steampunkified really easily. If you're watching my 1.18 survival series, you would already know this, since I showed off a pretty neat steampunk moss and bone meal farm the other day. But in general, steampunk and farms really do go hand in hand, especially ones with lots of pistons, moving items, and wiring. With a little bit of customization and the right block palettes, you can turn a regular old farm into a piece of steampunk machinery. Take this melon farm, for example. Example. This right here is the bare bones standard automatic redstone melon farm. And after swapping out some blocks and making a few additions, here we have a steampunk photovoltaic cell that actually makes melons out of thin air. Or maybe you want to build a really cool looking storage system. That can be steampunkified too. Check out how I'm routing all of these items from various farms into one huge bank of storage with all these pipes and tubes connecting them. Imagine that there's a power generator behind this storage unit which is sending out fuel to all of these farms inside the lightning rods here, which in turn are shipping all of their items back to the central storage unit. You can get really creative with these item transportation systems. Try it out, it's pretty fun. I like to put a lot of emphasis on making things look connected, practical, and grounded. What I mean by this is, well, in Minecraft you don't need to obey the laws of physics. Everyone knows this, you can have floating blocks, and water that expands infinitely, and all that lovely stuff. But to me, it always felt right to make sure that your steampunk builds felt more realistic. Like things are strapped down and connected to each other, and everything feels solid. For example, if you're making a bunch of huge gears, make sure they all have axles, and that those axles actually thread into something. Got a balloon for some kind of aircraft? If you're gonna strap a ship to it, you better make sure that that balloon is well secured. This emphasis on supporting things really feels steampunky to me, and I think it would add a lot to your builds. Steampunk is more than just vehicles. Of course, things like airships, giant walking machines, and other things like that are core parts of the steampunk aesthetic, and they're really cool. But you can go a lot further with steampunk design than just making vehicles. Maybe you're really into interior decorating like I am. In which case, try applying some of the steampunk color palettes and ideas to a factory interior, or maybe a laboratory. Check out this tinkerer's workshop filled to the brim with random gadgets and clutter and a whole bunch of other iconic steampunky objects. While it might seem weird to just, like, build random objects and junk to throw around in your interior, in my opinion it kinda adds to the vibe. Give it a try and you might like it. Alrighty guys, that's about all the time I have. I hope this was a great building tutorial for all you radical dudes out there. If you're here at the end of the video, thank you. It means a lot to me and helps out my channel more than you would think. Comment down below what building style you would like to see me tackle next. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.